play that type of character, it's so easy to get typecast as that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, I I feel as a, like from a, a industry perspective, if you're in that industry, saying someone's brave for for taking that uh, taking that kind of role and like really rocking it, that is brave because then you you know you fear that you're gonna get typecast as that. I also can see how that could be offensive because we shouldn't live in a society where producers and studios just assume that just because somebody plays a gay, a gay character, that's all they can do. But don't you think that we should have, I mean, that's what I'm saying though. It's like, for example, like if in the fifties and sixties uh, and before that, especially like thirties and forties and, and movies in Hollywood, almost everyone that was, was a black character uh, before the, I'd say before the fifties um, were played by white people and blackface mm-hmm. Like or even in the '60s with um, Breakfast at Tiffany's, uh, her neighbor who was Asian was played by Andy Rooney <laughs> in makeup. So my point is, is that that's offensive. But I'm saying people right. now who are heterosexual playing LGBT, why shouldn't those characters go to LGBT people, or should it not matter? Should it be like blind casting? I don't think it should matter. I think it should be whoever the best. looks the part, whoever whoever feels the part. And to be honest. Depending on the character, I think it could be a. I think it's a lot easier for a heterosexual person to play a gay character than it is a flamboyant gay man to play on American Horror Story. You know what I mean? Well, of course, mm-hmm. of course. But, Unless like he's I a say, really, really, really good actor. Because, because um, what's that? Milk. What was his name? Um, Sean Penn. Name. Sean Penn. The movie Milk. Sean Penn. Yes, thank yeah. you. Uh-huh. Um, he was amazing in that movie. You know, and that character had depth. That character had layers. So it's not always about a typical gay character. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, should there be affirmative action for gay for gay actors, <laughs> so that gay people have more of a chance because we we're not represented as much as we are in society, as much as we actually exist in society. That's what I guess what I'm trying to get at. Right. I mean, do you think that that would happen? Well, that's not the question. The question isn't what will happen. Is it should it happen or not? Yeah. I mean, yeah. But again, I think the part should go to who's the most deserving regardless of what their personal sexual preference is. I agree. I agree. Okay. Cool. Great. Well, that's all I have for today. So. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, no, I, actually one of you had said you wanted to talk about how you got fired from your job. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Jason. Yes, yes. So tell yes. us about this. Tell us about it's this. A, it's. I'm, I'm going to try to summarize it. And Didn't you just get a new job? I did. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what happened though, because this was really like just a bullshit situation. I'm going to try to summarize it. The best but wait, way before you start, just remind me: was it the hotel.com or is it somewhere else? Or job? Uh, it, <laughs> yeah, it was the help. It was hotel. Okay, yeah. sorry, go on. Well, no, let me take that back. Let me stop lying. I don't want to lie. Jeez. It's technically, it's technically <laughs> another company, but I don't, but I don't want to say their name because I just don't even want to give them that type of I totally money. forget I'm on air. I'm just like sitting here having a conversation with you. I'm sorry, go on. No, no, so I mean, so, yeah, so I, I, it, it wasn't with them, but I I don't want to say their name because I, don't, I do not want to give them that type of promotion because they don't even deserve it. Okay. So, um, where, where do I start? Okay, so I started working for this company, and I was training. So during my training process, it was a director of operations position. Mm-hmm. So during this director of operations, it was a director of op- it was a director of operations position for uh, a chain of fast food restaurants. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Now, um, the thing was that you know when I got hired on as a director of operations, they said, well, you know. When you join our team, uh, even though you're going to be primarily working in the office, if you're going to be director of operations for um, the stores in the Metroplex, you know, you have to learn how things operate in the store as far as, like, cooking and, mm-hmm. you know, equipment, that type of thing, right? And yeah. I said, oh, so I, so I have no problem. I mean, I don't have a problem doing it. I have no problem doing that. So they was like, you know, because the last thing we want to have, you know, have is someone who's a director of operations and doesn't know how to do anything in a store. Okay. So I said, okay, that makes sense. So, my, according to what they told me, I was supposed to do two weeks of training in a store mm-hmm. just to learn the basics and equipment and, you know, health, you know, health. How things work, basically. Yeah, right? pretty much. And so, and then my last week was supposed to, and after that, I was supposed to be working in the uh, corporate office. Okay. I said, fine, no problem. So, the first two weeks, I was driving to work at this particular location. 
Um, and they're opening another location in Wiley. For the people who don't live in the Metroplex, Wiley is like, it's here in the Metroplex. It's in the Dallas area, but it's kind of far out. Yes, um, it is. So I was training um, in one location that was closer to here in mm-hmm. the Dallas area. And then um, they were opening a store that was in Wiley. Yeah. So I do my training here. And then uh, I get a phone call from my boss who says, well, today's going to be your last day of training at this particular store. We're going to send you out to the Wiley store just so we can you know, prep up and get the store ready for, um, for their grand opening, which was like, yesterday okay and so i was like okay fine no problem what time do you want me to be there she said can you be there at 9 a.m i said fine no problem Mm -hmm. get there at 9 a.m well actually i get there about 8 50 um (laughs) there's a corporate trainer there because you know they were training the new employees that they had just hired and that type of thing spoke to the guy said that you know hey how's it going he spoke back and then all of a sudden after that i didn't hear he didn't say anything else to me for like the rest of the the day okay literally yeah, and he, yeah, he, yeah, I mean, he might have said maybe two sentences to me in the seven hours I was there. Oh my gosh, okay. So I was just like, okay, well, this is kind of odd. So, and then he got on the phone because uh, what happens was someone's supposed to come out that day and set up the uh, computer system for the registers and that type of thing. Mm-hmm. So, in order for him to do that, he had to contact corporate, and then corporate had to call whoever these people were that was coming and install them. And he was on the phone for about an hour total. So what I did was corporate was emailing me on my um, uh, email and was like, we need you to complete these things by the 31st because we have to get you, you know, certified or whatever, whatever the fuck they do. And so I said, okay, fine, no problem. So I took my laptop to work and I said, and he was on the phone and he was on hold. And I said, well, why are you doing that? I'm going to get on my laptop and I'm going to do some of these, you know, just do some emails and do some of these exercises right. because they want me, corporate is asking me to do this. He gives me a thumbs up, no problem. Okay. Like, okay, so everything's good. So then the um, my boss comes in. This is where it begins to go downhill. 2 o'clock, 2.06 p.m. to be exact. <laughs> so my boss comes in, and she comes in, and she says, oh, um, well, um, we have a little bit of a problem. I said, oh, well, I said, you know, what's up? What's wrong? She said, well, we need you to go back to the office. Just to let you guys know, the office... Their corporate office is in Irving. Okay? All the way across the Metroplex from yes. Wiley, yes. So she said, well, we have a problem. I said, okay, well, what's wrong? She's like, well, we need you to go to the corporate office because they're having some issues there and we really need you there. Okay. I was like, and now, when she told me that, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute now. I was thinking to myself, I'm like, you just told me yesterday to come out here for a Wiley. while. Now you want me to drive back across the other side of the Metroplex to go to the corporate office, Mm -hmm. and then you want me to come back out to Wiley the following morning, Mm -hmm. too? Mm -hmm. So I was just like, well, and I just said, I said, I financially cannot do that. I mean, technically I could, but I was just like, (laughs) if you want me to do all this fucking driving in my car, you need to give me some gas money. That's how I was looking at it. Like, you need to give me some fucking gas money. Okay. (laughs) So I told her, I said, well, you know, I'm sorry, but I, I, like, I financially cannot do that because driving from my house in Frisco... So Wiley and then Wiley to Irving to help them out and then Irving back to Frisco and then Frisco back to Wiley. No, I. That's no. like a hundred miles in a day. It was a. I added up. It was hundred and thirty six miles. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just like, I cannot do it. And then she says, and then she actually smiles in my face and says, Oh, okay. Well, you know, we'll figure it out. She left for two hours. Okay. I think she. They said that she was going to, you know, the restaurant depot place to go pick up some equipment or something like that. And uh, she comes back. She, well, before she comes back, I tried to call her. She didn't answer her phone. Mm-hmm. I sent her a text. She didn't return a text. And then at this point, I was like, you know what? Something's not right. Because whenever I would call or text her, she would always respond or something. Two hours went by. Didn't hear anything from her. So she comes back two hours later. By this time, it's 4 o'clock. And she says, you know what? Um, I don't think this is going to work. Why? Why? Because you wouldn't and I, drive. And and, and, I, and I said, I said, okay, well, and I was calm about it, and I stayed professional the entire time. I said, okay, well, you know, what made you come to this conclusion? And she said, well, um, you know, when we when we interview, you know, we you expect a lot from our. What was that? I think that was Christian trying to talk his things fucked up. Go ahead. Oh <laughs> no, I hear you. Oh, there he is. There he is. Okay, because I was like, I heard something. 
So she said, well, you know, when we hired that someone, you know, who's a director of operations, you know, we expect a lot from them. And we just feel like you're just not really, you know, pulling your weight. And I think, and then she was like, you know, plus you've never done this before, uh, which is, a, you know, a new field for you and blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, bitch. I said, did I not tell you this in the fucking interview? I was like, I sent you my resume. You looked over it, gave me, gave someone the okay for me to come in for an interview. I told you in your fucking face, you fucking cunt, that mm-hmm. I never did, did this before. You were still okay with it because you um, hired me. Yeah. So I'm thinking to myself, I was like, let, I was like, let's be honest. I said, you're not firing me because you don't think I'm doing a good job. Because if that was the case, you would have fired me a few days after I got hired. I said, pretty much, you're firing me because you asked, you were pretty much going to take advantage of me. And I said, I caught on to it. I questioned you about it, and then you got upset. I'm like, that's right. exactly why you're letting me go. Well, no, that's not the case. Yes, it is. Because I said, if I would have had my happy ass and my Toyota Camry and drove <laughs> 136 miles across around the damn Metroplex, I'm like, we wouldn't be having this conversation right mm-hmm. now. Well, you could, um, <clears throat> if they actually fired you in, in that manner and actually did not say it was a requirement of your job to be able to drive that distance and pay for it yourself, and they're not going to reimburse you, then you could actually you could sue them or whatever you want to do or take them to court or go workforce commission or something if you wanted to. Yeah. I'm, I'm debating on doing that. So well, I'm sorry that happened. But yeah, but I was just like, okay. And I was just like, all right, well, that's fine. Honestly, I really wasn't feeling the job anyway. Once I got in the door, it was one of those things like it was all glamorous. Like, Oh, you get this type of, you know, you get these type of benefits. You do this, 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 and this. Once I got in the door, like literally the first week I was like, no, I am so ready to get the hell out of here already after a week. So, um... Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was that, and you better have my fucking paycheck on Friday, you cunt. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> bitch better have my money. Exactly. Bitch better have my money. Well, so. that sucks. You know, that's one thing I hated. When I was... I mean, I think I was, uh, I was in my 20s. Um, I had to work for other people and everything until I was 25 when I started my business. And it was sucked. I never liked it. I was never good at it. I was a horrible employee because I was always, I know better than you and you're stupid. And <laughs> so I just was always like a horrible employee. I'm not saying you are, but my point is, is like people, I always had to deal with like political crap at work and, and deal with people's attitudes. And I just didn't like being around people. I didn't like people basically. <laughs> I was like, go away. So, um, to be in that kind of position where someone kind of fucks you over or whatever, and it's kind of unjust like that, that sucks. And I would have really, I would have done something about it. So I hope you do something about it. Now here's the fucked up part about the entire situation. Yes. When she interviewed me, you know, she was an African American woman. She owns these, you know, she is a franchise restaurant. Mm -hmm. I'm still not going to say the name. Mama's waffles. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I'm kidding. Go on. (laughs) So, um, you know, she's like, you know, well, you know, I'm a black business owner and, you know, you don't see a lot of black. Owners. And she's like, she's like, you know, you don't see a lot of black owned businesses, which she's right. She had a point there. But then she was like, you know, I'm all about, you know, hiring minorities, and African-Americans, because, you know, jobs are just really hard to come by for minorities and that type of thing, which, to, you know, she had a point to somewhat. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, I was like, she shouldn't be telling you that. Okay, exactly. But I was just like, I was just going along with it. I was, I was trying to get a job. I didn't give a fuck. So I was just like, okay, you know, I'm just nodding and smiling. I'm like, yeah, you're right, you're right. The last job that I had before I started my business, when I was 25 years old, I was fired from it. It was a black woman. Her name was Paula McClure. She's dead now, so it's okay. But anyway, her, she was, her name was Paula McClure. She was an actress. She was really, really good friends with Sharon Stone. She was on um, Total, Total Recall. Anyway, she had a spa here in Dallas that I ran for her. Anyway, um, she was a complete bitch to work for. But she, um, when she hired me, uh, she asked what race I was. <clears throat> And I, I got that question a lot, but never from an employer. And so when she fired me, I was like, I, I told the workforce commission about it, and that she'd actually asked me what my race is, what race mix I was, or whatever. And um, they, th- so I won the case because of that. So my point is, one of, that's one of the reasons I won the case. But um, the point is, is that you should definitely tell if you file a complaint with the workforce commission, tell them about that, and that she mentioned that. Um, they may take that into consideration. Although you are black and she's black, it's going to be kind of odd to say, <laughs> well, she, I'm hiring black people because there aren't black jobs or people aren't taking black jobs, whatever. Um, how does that really discriminate against you? I mean, it is discriminating against other people, though, so that's how they might see it. Yeah, but then the thing was, 
I believe the corporate trainer who happens to be white uh -huh. was behind this whole thing because as I was leaving, I was in the restaurant, and as I was leaving, I said, well, okay, let me go grab my things. So I had my backpack and my laptop and everything. So I said, well, let me grab my things, and I'll be out the door. 